and the Southeastern Divisional Champions, the Wolverines of the University of Michigan. The Bearcats come into this one as the Cinderella team of the four finalists, winning their last four tournament games convincingly and looking very much like a big handful for the Wolverines of Michigan. Okay. Wolverines of Michigan. Okay. They breezed through the early rounds, but then had to go into OT to beat All-American Jimmy Jackson and the much-favored Buckeyes of Ohio State. It certainly was a thriller. Can they maintain that momentum? Corey Blunt and Chris Weber start the final four with the Bearcats in control and Nick Van Exel. Blunt steps to the outside. They don't play a man in the low post, taking up a lot of space there. They want to have a lot of room. That's offense. He wrapped his arm right around Jawan Howard, and it's called against Cincinnati on the first trip. But Blunt showed that he's not afraid to put that ball on the floor and make a move. And here comes the press. Matching up with Buford, looking to pick off any long pass. Jalen Rose doubled up, gets it over to Howard, and a steal right away. Van Exel. He'll shoot two. Jim Van Exel's had a great NCAA tournament, and what he did there is what he does so well when he penetrates. He used his body to lean in on Howard, who is an excellent shot blocker. But here it is, the first time they turned the ball over on Jalen Rose. Juwan Howard cannot get to it, and here comes quickness. Van Exel takes it right to the hoop. Howard, who's quick for a big man. Now watch this lean in. He takes the ball right into Howard, and then makes it impossible for him to block it. Two for oh. Van Exel. He's a transfer from Trinity Junior College in Texas. He had 22 against Memphis State when they blew out Memphis State in the Midwest Final. Neither club a solid free throw shooting team. Here's the pickup. Trapping off even missed free throws. Jimmy King. Straight man to man. Howard Nelson. goes inside. Weber. Oh, nice. Turnaround. Half hook. And Jim, if Nelson is going to allow Weber to get the ball that low, he has no chance. He's given up about three inches and a lot of leaping ability. Notice total movement. Nobody in the low post stationary. Buford, three-pointer. Weber comes right out of it, and it's stolen away from him. Cincinnati will score for the first time on a slam dunk. What's made this team so great is their ability to go ahead and press out of any situation. That was a missed field goal, and they were still there to press. Weber's got to learn he cannot put the ball on the floor in that backcourt area against this team. It's Terry Nelson on the jam, and that ball deflected out of bounds. It belongs to Michigan. Jim, another thing you've noticed that so far, Cincinnati has been able to force Michigan to send the ball down the sidelines. That's exactly what they want. Michigan's got to figure out a way to get the ball to the center of the floor. Ray Jackson touching it for the first time. Here's Weber out high. Oh, they challenged Howard. He'll take it in the lane, give it up to Weber. Again, beautiful half hook. You know, we haven't even seen Chris Weber use that shot very often. Jim, we've covered him a number of times this year. He usually shoots the turnaround jumper or takes it to the hoop for the dunk. Ben Exel uses a screen from Blunt and hits the jumper. He's shooting 67% from outside in the tournament. And after missing the two free throws, he redeems himself from the outside. There is Jones, an excellent defender, playing in the backcourt, a little more size. Wide open is Weber. Couple of fakes. Oh, he had three players sail in the air, and the last one fouled him. Pretty good job by Nelson, though, because instead of giving up a dunk, and he said he is not going to give up any dunks to Weber, he puts Weber on the foul line where he has just now gone over the 50% mark as a free throw shooter. What was it Nelson said? He'll be on the floor before he dunks it if I'm That's in the right. area. He said he'd be looking up at me. Weber even told me yesterday at practice, he says, uh, I've been reading all this stuff and hearing all week that Cincinnati says I'm not going to be a factor in this game. <laughs> He's hit a couple of field goals, but misses both free throws. And there it is. You took away 100% opportunity on the dunk, put him on the line, and Michigan comes up with zero.
I don't sense any intimidation out here on the part of Michigan against this Cincinnati club. Three-pointer, bingo for Nick Van Exel. Jim, not only is he shooting over 60% in the tournament, that started with the great Midwest tournament, so he's on some roll. Jimmy King comes right back to tie it at seven. Bob Huggins upset with that. When that ball gets down the corner, he wants not only somebody playing Jimmy King, he'd like to have a double team down there. Herb Jones, their leading scorer, has not put up a shot so far. Forced it inside, perhaps, or Buford wasn't ready for it. And Michigan forces the turnover. Pretty solid defense by Ray Jackson, who came off that outstanding defensive performance against Jimmy Jackson. King, he's hit one already. Make it two. Number one three-point shooter for Michigan. Michigan is four for four from the floor at the final four. Blunt. Good pass. Yep, gives it up to Van Exel, and Van Exel now has seven of Cincinnati's nine points. I was surprised Howard didn't go after him on that play. Rose penetrating and scoring for the first time today. Jim, he's so tough at 6'8". When he penetrates, he's got that ability to go up with that little leaner left-hander of his. Only one missed shot in this game. Cincinnati four out of five, Michigan five for five. Martin has come into the game for Cincinnati. Eric Martin. Good rub off by Van Exel. He didn't get the ball. Jimmy King cannot afford to allow him to rub off that way. Van Exel. He'll beat him. Oh. Turned it over. Now watch Jalen Rose. Look over this defense. Try to get the ball in the middle somehow. Oh, tough pass. That's going for the home run ball too early. Got to flash guys up to the top of the key, get the ball in the middle, and then break down the defense. Then Exel has some quickness on Jimmy King. You know what, Jim? You've already seen that. He yep. could have fired up a three on the last trip where he turned it over. That's out of bounds belonging to Cincinnati. Ray Jackson, an excellent defender. And against Jones, who is one of the best post-up players in college basketball, Jackson just beating him to the spot. Anthony Buford with the ball. He played for Huggins at Akron and then transferred. Played for him for two years, driving and yeah. laying it up short. Weber spots the break opportunity, and Jackson lost it. Weber's right there. Lunt pulls it down. Cincinnati wants a break. Buford with Rose shouldering him, and Rose has called for the foul. Well, repeat champions, Billy. It hasn't happened since 1973 with UCLA, but Cincinnati pulled it off in 61 and 62, celebrating the 30-year anniversary of that last championship. Of course, during that time, beat the great Jerry Lucas Ohio State teams and had a chance to become the first three-peat college basketball club and got beat by Loyola in that great overtime game. And Duke will be trying to duplicate that back-to-back -back as UCLA last did it in 73, and they'll be playing Indiana later tonight. Jeff Scott has come in for the Bearcats replacing Blunt, and here comes the pressure. Well, you can see that Bob Huggins is very confident with that bench of his. He's going to go nine deep today. He's going to use those fellas quite a bit. And that puts some pressure on Steve Fisher to start thinking about his bench early on in this game. Howard finds a slashing king. And he is fouled by Jeff Scott, who just entered the game. If Michigan will get the ball to the center, instead of going down the side as they did right there, they're going to be able to go ahead and work very well against this press. Ray Jackson inbounding. Great defensive player, Billy, and Herb Jones, who he's guarding, has not been a factor so far. Cincinnati's leading scorer. Oh, Good Rose. Steal. Got it right Henry back. Steal. Now, this is an area on the floor 
particularly with Corey Blunt not in the game where Michigan can take advantage if they can get the game in the paint. Blunt's coming right back in. Scott's been in the game, Billy, for a minute, and he's already been assessed two. Well, I don't think he's got, let's see if he's taking, yeah, he is taking Scott out. I thought maybe that Bob Huggins might try to get big there and play Scott together with Blunt. Howard, turn around over Jones. Oh, look at Van Exel get up. You said he's quick, Billy. He can leap. Martin coming on a wing, tries to get it over to Jones. Wolverines race ahead. Tough pass. Weber trying to go inside to Howard. Well, that we've seen Chris Weber on the break try to make a play that's not quite the, the calculated pass you want to make at this stage of the game. It's kind of like Rose's long pass. I mean, it was there, but he didn't have to make it quite so uh, such a fancy play. Now watch the screen off the top. A scissors play. Looking to hit the guards down low. Jones on the baseline. He's doubled up. Weber blocks it out of bounds. Now Weber will have a little something to say. <laughs> Jones on the way by. Don't bring that stuff in here. A little jawing when, during the warm-ups, Billy. Well, well actually, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. They, they started out in the warm-ups really talking to each other, but they haven't in the game so far. Nice move by Buford over the taller defender. Buford averaging a little over 15 a game. Jimmy King, he'll pull up and nail it. Boy, he's hot at the start. That's a two for King, and he's three for three from the floor, including a couple of threes. An excellent jump shooter from the outside. He's getting more and more confidence as the year goes on. Well, oh, good change off the pass. Chris, Chris Weber was lucky that he got a piece of that one because Martin had an easy layup. Which freshman will be replaced first? Yeah, and Weber a moment ago telling Cincinnati what a great picture. Well, you know, Bob Fishman telling him to zip it up, guys, telling Cincinnati, I'm sure. Well, you know, he, he really has a lot of emotion in the game, Jim, and I think a lot of times it's emotion within himself. He might have been talking to himself, saying, let's get back to the game. Alan Jackson handling a ball in for the first time for Cincinnati. Michael Talley has come in for Michigan, replacing Jalen Rhodes. Rose, the first freshman to sit. Jones! Well, he hasn't had any luck taking the ball inside on Jackson, so he shoots from a standstill jumper. Hit Good idea. Three. That was a three. Weber, oh, right past two Bearcats who could have stolen it. Well, that pass was intended for Howard. He didn't get his hands up in time, and it went all the way through to Chris Weber, who was on the ball enough to be ready to make the catch. And I thought Steve Fisher would go to that bench, bring some of those experienced players in. It's going to take more than a starting team to win this one. Second chance opportunity. Stolen away. No, they won't get that chance. Tally will take the middle. Dish it to Keith. 360. Followed up by Jackson. Buford will take it at him. Oh, Weber. He was trying to draw the charge. He just worked weaved his way right around him. Well, Buford now is taking it against Weber, and Exel is taking it against Howard, so they're not afraid to take it inside, even the guards. Back in. That should be a goaltend. That should be a goaltend. Yes, sir. We're going to have a... We're going to talk about it first. Jim Burr yes, says yes from midcourt that counts goaltending and a foul. Without question, the foul was committed. And what might have happened in that particular case, the minute that the foul was, was called, Martin might have gone up there not realizing that the play had not ended because it was an obvious goaltend. Two on Blunt and two on Scott. Need the inside guys for Cincinnati, and they brought in Terrence Gibson. Bob Huggins' first signee. Scott bouncing back off the bench in for Blunt. Jim, that could be a real serious problem. And you'd like to be, if you're Bob Huggins, an opportunity to stay as big as possible. You don't want Michigan to be able to play volleyball on that rim. Officials timeout with 11.58 to go in the first half. The Wolverines by one. 
By the Chris half. Weber, 10 points, 6 rebounds in the first 20 minutes. This man with the ball, Jalen Rose, has had some big second halves this year. Look out for him in the final 20 minutes. And for Bob Huggins, he can bring Corey Blunt back in. He kept him on the bench a long time with those two quick fouls. Scott on the bench with three, but he dodged that bullet very well. Juwan Howard. Buford saves it to Blunt. That was just the quickness of Buford. Weber was in excellent position for the offensive board and couldn't complete. Van Exel faked as though he was going to alley-oop it and drove right past his man to draw the foul. Jim Van Exel's been too quick for anybody on the Michigan team. Here we see those stats and Michigan shooting 58% and finding themselves behind in the game. But there's the reason why they've turned the ball over and those turnovers have really led to the difference in this ball game. Billy, that was the third foul against Jawan Howard. Two shot situation, Van Exel will have one more. He is the Nintendo champion on this team in the Super Technical Bowl. <laughs> they play, they take it with them, Billy, on the road. Play that computer game and he was the champ this year. See the Here's what's interesting, how that trap will jump right back at you. Here they are, back into their matchup zone, looking to get an opportunity to trap out of it, and there's another turnover. Steve Fisher beside himself. He's going to go back with Tally and try to play the three-guard set. There he is, Tally for King. Now, King started this game hitting three real solid jumpers down in the wings where you want to have some shots available. This is going to free up Rose maybe to play that position, so I'm just Tally will have the ball. By the old. That's a pretty good idea by Van Exel. It's just that Blunt didn't move to the basket. Yeah, pick and roll not sure. working that time. Seventh turnover for Cincinnati. I mean, there was the pick. There was just no roll. <laughs> Every pass by Michigan seems to be one without any authority on it. There's a good two-handed chest pass, and that sets up a play. Herb Jones. 6-4, shortest man on the front line, but their top rebounder. Well, everybody from the Cincinnati club is quick getting off the floor. Jones, we saw Eric Martin. This man right here, Anthony Buford. Jones, three-pointer. Luck better be careful. Almost over the back of Howard. You notice how Michigan didn't look to get that ball quickly up the floor. Taking away some of their confidence on transition. Oh, he read that one perfectly. Herb Jones. Jim, no authority on the passing. Steve Fisher may have to go back to that starting lineup. The Cincinnati has taken Jalen Rose out of this game. They're again picking up the dribble in the bad spot. Tally. Watch this cross-court passing against a team like Cincinnati going to get you in all kinds of problems. The ball has got to somehow get to the center of the floor. Comes Jimmy King. That last foul on Anthony Buford. His second. Jim, this is the lineup that I think can best work for Michigan. They can go ahead now and put Tally in the center, Rose and King on the wings. And still have enough power inside with Weber and Howard if they never get in a half-court set. Weren't you impressed with Buford yesterday when we had a chance to talk to him? I mean, he's just an articulate guy, has his head on straight. You can see why he provides such great leadership for this team. He told us when we met with him, Billy, I've got a feeling that Michigan going to be looking past us. Oh, they're trying to set up Jones over here on the back door cut. Pretty good job by Rose. Buford takes the pick. Nelson wasn't ready for it. Two on two with Rose, the trigger man. He didn't know what Blunt. a block by Blunt. He didn't know Blunt was behind him. Oh. Oh. Van 
whistle yeah. goes right by Weber. Gave a little hesitation dribble and Weber bit on it. King, they need the three. You can see the Michigan players getting a little annoyed with each other, Jim. Howard, he'll shoot two. Look at some of the expressions on the faces of the Michigan kids. And maybe more than expression. First time we've seen this in this team. Going back to that Indiana game where they played so positively. Of course, in the tournament. Now they're starting to question themselves. You can see that. You're right, Billy. Two for Howard. That was the second foul on Terry Nelson. Billy, I want to tell a story about this young man signing with Michigan. We talked about it earlier. He was raised by his grandmother, Janie Howard. And she had to sign his letter of intent. He made the decision on November the 14th of 1990 before he went to school. 8 o'clock in the morning. She told him after he signed, you made the right decision going to Michigan. He said, Grandmother, why didn't you tell me that all along? She said, you're going to need to make some decisions as Weber follows up. You're going to need to make some decisions one day on your own. Later that afternoon, while Howard was at school, his grandmother passed away of a heart attack. And there is Chris Weber taking a page out of Duke's book. He slaps the ground defensively and said, guys, let's get into this thing. Martin, who really turned things around for Cincinnati back in the game. Blunt, he's put the ball on the floor a few times in this half. Yes, what a tip by Martin. It's an explosive leaper. Well, he's much bigger than 6'5". Oh, oh, I didn't see that. Well, it was Tally pushing off against Jones. Three men around the ball. Tally's got a hit ahead. Second on Tally. Thought it might be a reach-in on Jones. See right here, he pushes Jones out of the way. No question about it. Perfect replay to prove it. Call him the Fab Five or five times. Whatever you call them, they're down five at the moment in the second half. The Cincinnati pressure D has been part of the story here, Billy. Well, not only is it turning the ball over, but in the second half, Michigan's just one for six, shooting 17%. They've been able to get into no semblance of an offensive set on half court. They'd like to have Martin with Chris Weber one-on-one. -on -one. Weber was saying it was off his forehead, off of uh, Martin's forehead, but Hightower was there and it's Cincinnati basketball. Weber must have Martin by a solid four inches, but he's given up an awful lot of quickness on that first move that Martin puts on him. See if they try to take advantage of it. There he is. Terrence Gibson back in for Cincinnati. Van Exel gives it back to Martin. Ball touched the back of the board. And it's a turnover. Now, what, what Bob Huggins is saying is that the ball was hit when it went up in the air off Martin's hand, and consequently, it should be Cincinnati ball. And that's what they're going to call. Everything going Cincinnati's way right now. You see the play. Van Exel makes the good dump. Good play by Weber. He'll go up. Now, see, the ball was hit by Weber before it hit the stanchion behind, so it's an excellent call. Shot clock is under 10. Now we're down to the five, and Jim, I'm going to go back to halftime. There is, what, 15, 12 left in the game, and not just the uh, five seconds? That's what you meant by there Wait a go. minute. There we go. Van Exel. Van Exel gets hit, and that's going to be a three a three uh, foul shots coming up on this one. It's a three-point shot. Tally got him. It's Tally's third personal. You know, really, Van Exel, in this particular game and throughout the NCAA tournament where he has been so outstanding, is probably as fine, if not the best guard play of anybody in the tournament so far this year, has put the speed level at a level that Michigan can't handle right now. He's going by people. Creating a lot of mismatches. 
struggling today from the line. Remember, he opened, missing his first two. He's now one for five. He did not, Nick Van Exel, did not start the season at guard. In fact, not until uh, some 14 games into the year did he replace Alan Jackson as the starting point. But they're 18 and one since they made that move. And, you know, in talking to Bob Huggins about it, said it was just a matter of time. And he makes them tough to defend. Match their largest lead, seven point lead. King trims it right away to four with that three-pointer. King is drilling his outside shots today. And a perfect man to set down in that low wing position. Back screen on Weber. Motion offense right here by Cincinnati. Bounce pass to the corner. Van Exel gets himself some operating room, missed the layup. Weber snaps it out to Tally. Goes behind the back to take the middle. Right into the arms of Howard. Good break for Michigan. Jim, you notice how little Jalen Rose is touching the ball. Cincinnati could not have planned it better. Almost invisible it, in the exactly. second half. See, Tally's got the ball a lot. Once he breaks that press, he should get it back to Rose. Three players around Jones. is lucky to get that one out. Martin caught him on top of the jumper. Now spins around Weber. And Blunt's going to be over the back. Number three for Blunt. Huggins will probably let him go. He's got Scott on the bench, who uh, was not particularly effective in the first half. Picked up three quick ones himself. Well, a moment ago, it was 50 to 43. Now 50 to 48. Michigan can tie it or even take the lead on this possession. Now Michigan has to figure out a way to get the ball over half court and then get into their offense in the low post. They have not been able to do that the entire game. Jimmy King. Still haven't. Rose able to race that one down. Rose wants it back. See that 2-3 matchup zone causing all kinds of problems. How about Van Exel? Stripped it right out of his jump shot. He's going all the way. And Jim, you look up at the scoreboard and you have a feeling Cincinnati in total control of this game, but that hasn't been the case. There's Van Exel coming from behind just as Blunt did a, a time or two ago, being able to make the block from behind. Van Exel taking the ball out of the hands of Rose. Jalen Rose. As we see Bosco back in. That was the fourth on tally, so he'll sit. And what this also means that with Bosco in, he and Jimmy King will play the wings, and Rose now will be required to handle the ball. So after making the steal from Rose off the shot, Van Exel will shoot two. Too bad these two couldn't have played on the same team. Could you imagine that rock and roll backcourt of Exel Rose and Van Jalen? <laughs> it's a reach. You said I'd never go up with it. <laughs> and here they are. 16 Again, for Van Exel and uh, Jones working on Rose on this trip. Yeah, notice that uh, try to wait till he gets over half court before they trap him. Here they come. Soft touch by Weber. Back to a two-point lead for Cincinnati. And if Cincinnati gets in a game where they're trading baskets half court at a time, then it swings the balance back over to Michigan. Cincinnati needs to turn them over some. will have his hands full with Van Exel's quickness. Double low post. Jones missing over the two Giants.
Bosco. Long rebound sets up the break for the Bearcats. Bosco from behind gets the steal. Good hustle by Bosco. This could tie it. Howard's blocked by Blunt. Oh, his second big one of the half. Van Exel. Jimmy King forgot Van Exel was a left-hander. He just gave him a little shoulder fake and came back to his strong hand. One of the few times today that Michigan has gotten the ball where it needs to go, right onto the foul line area, and then dumped down inside. Rose, three out of nine so far. Tip, I guess, oh, Bosco. I thought the first tip was going in. I was going to give him credit for it, but two players in the area. But we Weber was doing a good job using his body to shield everybody out. Bosco couldn't deliver. See the shot? Now watch Weber on the inside. He's got everybody blocked out. He had a perfect situation for Bosco and might have blocked it a little bit himself. Van Exel with his second foul and Bosco to the line for two, Billy. He's a uh, an aerospace engineering major at Michigan as we see Scott with three fouls back in for Blunt. Bosco had a class on Monday, the day after the overtime game against Ohio State where he had to give an oral presentation on laminar versus turbulent boundary layers flowing over a rotating football. Ten minute speech. I would have loved to have heard the conclusion. Well, that's a Bo Schembechler course. Is that what he's back there teaching that one? You know, he talked to this Michigan club after they turned the ball over 34 times against Detroit. That picked up their concentration with it. An official's timeout. Eric Martin has come back in, Billy. Let's keep an eye on him for Cincinnati. Well, he and Jones make it tough down inside because they're so good in low post. Three-pointer. Martin. Martin again. Gives him the second chance. Buford in the lane. On the hands. Rose with the foul. His second. Well, Buford talked about going down to the city of Detroit. He's from Flint, Michigan, playing an awful lot of summer league ball. Rose, of course, a, a player that's played so much summer league basketball and that AAU basketball that they've both played and gained a great deal of experience. Weber coming back in. Buford said uh, he's been hearing where Weber says they played together in some of those summer league games. I don't remember him. <laughs> You've got to remember Chris Weber if you've ever been in the game with him. But Buford has played for a national champion before, 1986 and 87. He was on the national AAU champion team from Michigan with Derek Coleman, Mark Macon, Anderson Hunt, Doug Smith, and Steve Smith. How about that team? I don't, I don't like that team. I mean, how can you put that group of guys together and not win it? Really? All the rest are in the pros. I thought you were going to say you don't like that team. You love that I team. I guarantee huh? you. Bosco putting the ball on the floor a lot. Buford has tied it at 58, nearing the 530 mark. Bosco. Showing confidence. Score the basket. And he'll shoot one. Jim, you hit it right on the head. He has come into this game with a confidence that the other players are starting to pick up on. And we're talking about a man that was a starter at the beginning of this year. And one of the real tributes to Steve Fisher's coaching has been the fact that the fellas that were unseated as former starters on this club have really stayed on the bench with a positive attitude. Riley, we saw get his chance against Oklahoma State and deliver. Bosco is delivering today. Three-point play and a three-point lead for Michigan. Van Exel with his fourth foul. And I would say this time down the floor, get Van Exel into it somehow. He's been too quick for Michigan when he's touched it. Buford had it blocked. Bosco gets it out of the trap to Rose. Beautiful. Here we go. Wolverines now gaining confidence. Bob Huggins said, I've seen enough for the moment. 
Timeout Cincinnati. Bruce Weber will give you a cutaway shot, as we call it in our business. After the dunk, put him up five. <laughs> <laughs> well, the expressions have changed, Jim, and so has the confidence level of Michigan. And I think a very wise timeout by Bob Huggins. He cannot let this game get away from a team that has played extremely well here today. In my estimation, then Exel's the man that they've got to give an opportunity to score for. Five minutes to go. Michigan by five. He's setting screens on the inside. Terrence Gibson. defense and good patience there he is just too much size in there loose ball tied up belongs to Michigan the arrow belongs to the Wolverines Bob Huggins got it to the man that he wanted to have that ball but Van Exel had to make too many moves to get inside and then there was so much size in his way Michigan's turnovers in the second half they've uh, well, they had to to get back into it, down seven at one time. I, I think one of the keys to that, Jim, has been attitude. Instead of trying to make huge plays, long passes, they're now starting to get more solid. Reach in by Jones. His first team foul number eight. It'll be a one and one. I saw those shots of Chris Webber, and it reminded me of the Oklahoma State game, Billy, where he fouled out, and he was so intense on the bench trying to cheer his teammates on to advance to the next round. And they tagged him with the nickname ML Carr. And a couple of times he almost hurt some teammates, grabbing him by the neck, coming off the court in excitement, trying to get him pumped up. Here's well, Buford back in. They promised him that would not be his last game. And, of course, there was nothing he could do about it sitting over there on the bench. His he had foul trouble, but his teammates came through for him. His roommate at the line, Rose, told him, don't worry about it. You're not, you've not played your last game of the season. We're going to win it. And they did win that game. And then they won in overtime against Ohio State. And today they've come back from seven down in the second half. This free throw could put them ahead seven. And Jim getting down at crunch time. It's interesting that of all people, Isaiah Thomas talked to this Michigan bunch and said, there's Voskel again coming up with a big play. But Isaiah talked to this club on time and said, the last two minutes are where the game is played with a heart. And this team is getting down to that point right now showing a lot of it and I think right here if they're looking for a MVP of this game today for Michigan it's been Voskel off the bench and again a tribute to Fisher he just kept playing with the parts of his puzzle until he finally found one that would work Blunt was assessed his fourth Voskel will shoot one more Blunt with four Van Exel with four Scott comes back in for the Bearcats. The great Midwest Conference puts a team in the Final Four in its first year in existence. You have to go all the way back to 1977 when UNC Charlotte went for the Sun Belt. That was the last year Cincinnati was in the tournament yeah. before this year. They were Al McGuire and Marquette's first victim in their championship run in the 77 tournament. They had not played in the tournament in 15 years. And had beaten Marquette that year in regular season. But not when it really counted. Jones, a much needed three. Oh, how clutch was that? Good step out by Jones. Everybody had been cutting to the basket. The low post was well covered. Cuts it to four, under four to go. See, what Boskell's doing is penetrating and taking the ball back to the middle. Look at the difference between his passes and the floaters that have been thrown by King and Rose. They reached in. Buford forced the steal. They get it back ahead to him. <laughs> Bosco, obvious basket interference. It's a two-point game. Michigan by two, 65-63. Jim, how, how about the smart play by Buford? He looks back behind him to see if there's anybody coming. Jim, one of the things we have to think about the rest of this way is free throw shooting. Neither one of these teams are good free throw shooting clubs, both at 65%. But one key factor is that Cincinnati will be shooting two on the next foul. 
Boy, there's a lot of passes that don't have zip on them, and that's what a trap would like to pick off. Matchup zone again. Laying back a little bit, not coming out the trap. Fosco, three-pointer. Oh, man. No way. Bob Huggins says, how can you let that man open? Remember the first game we did, Michigan and Duke? At that point, Steve Fisher said he's our best perimeter shooter. And here we are. Almost a whole season has passed, and he comes to the front. Reach. Jimmy King, yep, reached in. His second. And the seventh against the Wolverines. So a one and one. Well, on the matchup zone, the last time down for Cincinnati, and Bob Huggins are really on his club. They were very passive, not trapping aggressively like they did in that first half when they had Michigan completely confused. Corey Blunt. He was Basketball Times Junior College Player of the Year last year. But he's this year a 55% free throw shooter. 6'10 center. One and one. Oh, big one. Line driver. And there is the comedian on the team who finds nothing funny at this point in the game. Terry Nelson, that is. One more for Blunt. Sixty-eight, sixty-four. Maize and blue. King. Weber crashes, comes back out to King. And Steve Fisher is screaming to his play, play keep away. He wants the ball oh, back, <laughs> almost picked off by Buford. He wants to force that trapping defense to get spread out so you can make a pass. Martin fouling Howard, three on Martin. Team foul number nine, so one and one for Howard. Foul is charged number three, Eric Martin, his third, team's ten. I mean, make that ten team fouls, and that is important because instead of... Sure is. If it was nine, it would be a one and one. Now, and with it being ten team fouls, it's a two-shot situation. Jim, I often think for teams that are not good free-throw shooting clubs, that's really important. To know that you've got another one coming gives you that little bit of confidence. Tremendous advantage on the boards for the Wolverines. As I said before, Cincinnati had out-rebounded every opponent in this tournament coming into today. Hit them both. Michigan by six. Well, they've got the Fab Four and one out here now. The one being Bosco. Ray Jackson, the freshman that's not in there now. Buford, three-pointer. Beautiful oh. arch. Beautiful arch on that shot. You liked it all the way. Nighttime in Minneapolis, the Metrodome. Michigan leading by three. Cincinnati getting a three-pointer a moment ago by Anthony Buford, then calling a timeout. So the Bearcats have one. Billy, take us through some strategy here with 1.53 to go. Well, Jim, one of the things that has hurt Cincinnati in the second half, they have not been able to press as much because they're only shooting 36%. But I think they have lived and died with this press. The rest of the way, it's going to be, can Cincinnati turn one over here, or can Michigan finally make a good play and maybe even come up with Cincinnati gambling with an easy basket? Instant defense, Terrence Gibson, number 10, now coming in on Bosco, in for the Bearcats. They're back to the man-to-man -man pressure here. Tough shot by Jalen Rose. What a save by King. And a foul against Cincinnati. That was a tough shot by Rose. He almost got it, though. Yeah, he took on the challenge from Anthony Buford. Probably not a smart move on his part and got lucky. As Jimmy King, his freshman teammate, comes up with a sensational save. There's the tough shot. You'll see King go flying out of bounds and get a piece of it. And watch Buford. Number 23, come over and commit his fifth. 
He reached in and he has fouled out. They'll miss his leadership with 1.27 to go. Jim, they still have him on the floor, so it must have been his fourth. Okay. Oh, all right. So thank you. Stan Corrector. Buford is in there. Well, he they made originally it. announced. Our guy Mike Swanson heard of the original announcement. They corrected it. I missed that. That's I apologize. Okay. <laughs> Now they've got to be thinking, get a two-point possession, and let's see if they do anything different. Get a two, you still got time enough to go for the three-point shot later. Van Van Exel. Exel takes the three. They have position underneath. That was Martin that got a hand on it. Now they're going for threes. Buford. Oh, gave it up at the last minute. Jones. Short. Weber ahead. Good pass. Back to King. There it is. Just as Christian Leitner, Jim, said last week, the catch was the most important thing. Weber looked that ball right in his hands and made the great catch on that play. Out of bounds belonging to Cincinnati. Seven-point lead with 43 seconds remaining. As that ball was in the air for so long, you would have a tendency to look for the basket instead of catching the ball first. Weber did the fundamentally sound thing. Martin, who's been there all day. Oh, almost had a three-point opportunity underneath. Well, they're down seven now. They've got to force a turnover, and they've got to count on threes the rest of the way. I thought on that one possession, Jim, they had enough time to go for a two inside to Martin and then try on your three later. And they were really uh, set on shooting three-point shots. Gibson back in. Martin kept it alive with his ninth rebound. Big performance off the bench. Jackson in also for Buford. 35 seconds to go. Well, what you think here is Bob Huggins is going to try to just put somebody in there for defense and bring Buford and Van Exel right back into the game. But that's taking a gamble with only 35 seconds to go. They're standing on the sidelines, as you can see, not sitting. Two for Eric Martin. Martin's been a 50% free throw shooter in the tournament, 55 on the year. Perfect. Tally comes in. Voskul was out. And Bosco gets a standing O for the Michigan faithful. He's been the guy that did it today for him. Gibson reached in on Rose. You Sent him see, to the line for two. See what Bob Huggins is doing. Using his two offensive performers, using Gibson and Jackson to commit the fouls. Lengthen this game as best he possibly can. So we get back to the point that they will be shooting two. Makes it a little easier. Go right back in. Rose at the line to shoot two. I asked Rose and Weber what they were doing three years ago when Michigan was at the Final Four in Seattle. And they said on that Final Four Saturday, we both were rooting for Illinois. We thought they were more exciting back then. You know what's interesting, Jim? We talked about the game coming up with Duke and Indiana and everybody talking about the repeat. But I saw a stat that actually staggered me a little bit. The five freshmen from Michigan were all born in 73, which is the last time we had a team repeat. That's right. Hard to believe. Each team has one timeout remaining. This remarkable group of youngsters that has really swept the country, perhaps more popular than any team I've seen come on the scene since Phi Slamma Jamma nine years ago, and they're now just 33 seconds from playing for the national championship. Well, Jim, there's only one thing Cincinnati can do right now, and that is pray that Michigan can't drop their foul shots. What they're going to have to do is foul on their end of the floor where they're on defense and go for three-point shots on offense. 
and the way that Jalen Rose hit the last two, and we saw a complete change in the facial expressions of the Michigan players midway through the second half, and it's continued right now. They're playing with great confidence. And a good job by Juwan Howard to step out, take away the three. Buford, a high arching shot. Chase down by Martin, gives him another chance. Buford again. Blunt kicks it out to Van Exel. They want the three. Oh, and he gets it. Oh, that's, that's going to be a basket. That's going to be a three. I believe it's going to be a three and, and a foul it is shot. It's going to be a four point opportunity. Now, nobody has raised their hands. Yes. Now they have. What happened, a complete breakdown by Michigan's players when the ball went inside. Corey Blunt did a great thing, and Bosco got caught charging it. And Nick the Quick put it up there. What a smart play by Van Exel. He reminds me of Nate the Skate Archibald. Extremely quick. Kenosha, Wisconsin native. But that was a case, you know, if you're Michigan, You've got to think and surround the three-point area defensively and let him make a two-point putback. And he can cut it to three with 14 seconds remaining. And you know what's going to happen on the inbounds pass. Go for the steal and foul. Oh, big miss. Oh, they get the ball back. Under 10. Nice screen by Blunt. They don't have to have the three. Well, now they do. Time running out. It's over. Michigan is playing Monday night for the national championship. Michigan certainly didn't make it easy on themselves. Cincinnati, well, they can hold their heads high. They took it right down to the last gasp. Great basketball for us to watch, though, wasn't it? Okay, the Fab Five will now wait for the winner of the University of Indiana Hoosiers and the Duke University Blue Devils semi to be settled. We're going to have that one for you next week. Don't miss it. Don't forget, Tuesday night, right here on ABC, exciting, hard-hitting American college football featuring the future stars of the NFL. Spread the word. I'll see you then. Now listen, we leave you with what we think sums up the sort of college spirit and the loyalty and the color and all of that business that these schools have demonstrated through this tournament. Listen to this. The University of Michigan band with their fight song, To the Victors.